Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're using some older sets um, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> I'll get to that when we get to that. Um, but I'm using the Darling Dahlia's Stamps and Dies and then the Miss You Big Time. If you're a big fan of these um, sentiments, we actually, uh, in the latest release, Honeybee just released more. Um, it's called uh, big time kindness. Those are, they're fantastic. I love them. Um, and then I'm using the double stitch polygons as well. So here I'm just creating some masks, um, for my design. So I guess story time is kind of entangled with, um, some tips for inspiration. So I knew that this card design was going to give me two, different cards, uh, but using the same supplies. Like I was going to be able to use kind of my leftovers from each portion of it to make another card, which honestly I super love. Um, so here I'm using Eclipse masking tape. I'm going to be stamping in the Be Creative Intense Black ink from Honeybee. This is safe for alcohol markers. I am going to be using um, my sketch markers today because honestly, I'm totally in love with this pink combination. <laughs> and so I really wanted to use it. Um, so I recently, I've had a lot of assignments um, because I... I work for various companies and sometimes it's just guest design. Sometimes it's, you know, I'm a full on design team member like I am for Honeybee. Um, oh, so here what I'm doing is I know that I'm going to cut my polygon out of the center, but I need my design to work without that middle section. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to trace it super quickly with a pencil so that I can see for my stamping what it's going to look like with that polygon portion removed. Um, that way I know that I'm going to have a balanced design. Um, but please, you'll see later on, I forget to do it, but you're going to want to erase that pencil line before you get to your coloring uh, with your alcohol markers, because if you color over pencil with your alcohol markers, you'll trap it, and then you can't erase it, and it's there forever, ever. Um, but so here, I'm stamping my largest bloom first, kind of in my top left-hand corner. I'm going to stamp that and then mask it, and then I will stamp all of the other pieces, parts um, around it, uh, masking what I need to as I go. So anywho, back to the assignments. So recently I've had a lot of assignments, and for me I really struggle with assignments. Um, I like to use what kind of speaks to me and what I'm naturally drawn to and what inspires me. And I understand why there is a need for assignments, you know, because if you're a company, you want to make sure that your products are getting proper representation. Um, but anyway, so that's what I've, I've kind of been doing a lot of that. And so I really just wanted to sit down and play. <laughs> um, and so that is why I'm using some older sets, because I wanted to use um, kind of what I was inspired by or drawn to. And I've used these in the past, and I will continue to use them in the future because they're just really good sets. Um, and isn't that what we're all buying? I mean, honestly, things that like we're inspired by and stuff. Um, so... But one of the things with the assignments is it kind of zaps my creativity a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And I think we all find ourselves in that um, kind of like lost craft mojo times every now and again for different reasons, not necessarily because you're working with assignments, but maybe there's something else going on in your life um, that's kind of sucking your creativity or you don't know why it's fled. That's happened to me before. I'm like, why can't I make anything? It's killing me. Um, so what I did was I went back and looked at my own old cards. That is what I did. And I was like, okay, so what are some things that I, you know, I'm looking for cards. I'm inspired by like, oh, I really love this. And then that is how I got here. Now it is different. Um, the images that I'm using are different. And the way that I put it together, the other card had a tag in it. Um, it was much, much older. It was probably at least five, six years old. Um, but that's totally okay because it still was enough of a jumping off point that I could get myself moving. Here, I'm using the little, um, the little pick tool, the little pokey tool from Honeybee because <laughs> right before this video, I painted my nails. 
I totally did not have any intention of matching my card to my nail polish, uh, but it happened. <laughs> it happened anyway. Um, but because I have on some kind of like brighter nail polish, I have had it happen in the past where uh, when I went to go pick something up my up off my card, I like streaked my nail polish across the cardstock and I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen. Also, I didn't want to mess up my nails because even though they're dry to the touch, sometimes they can be um, still a little bit like malleable. And so I wanted to make sure I wasn't messing them up. <laughs> I wasn't messing them up because I took the time to paint them. So now here, I'm just finishing off the rest of the card design by stamping these two little leaves behind this other dahlia. And then this is going to give me some of the stamping on the section I'm, I am cutting out and some of the stamping on the piece that I will be leaving behind. So for this one, I am just stamping down the images and I will be die cutting these out with their coordinating die. Um, so I'm just, I need them for the second card. So I am going to stamp those, uh, same ink because all the coloring is going to be the same. And then we will get into the coloring. I will show you, um, the coloring of the large dahlia, the small little side one, and then one or two leaves. I'm not going to, I, I didn't leave it in for everything because honestly, it's the same thing over and over again. And you can just watch this video over and over again if you so need to. So here you can still see my little pencil line. I completely forgot about it um, because it was so light. Uh, and so when I colored the large dahlia, it wasn't noticeable. I didn't see it. Um, but then when I went to move on to the smaller one, I was like, oh, I got to get rid of this pencil line. Um, so I'm going to erase it about halfway through. But you should erase it now before you start the coloring. <laughs> do it before you do the coloring. So in order to, like I said, I was just wanting to really do something that was going to bring me joy and make me happy. Uh, isn't that why we all do, you know, card making, coloring, stamping, those things? Um, and so I wanted to go with a color combination that I really loved. This particular pink combination from Sketch Markers, I totally adore. It's like a super bright, bold pink, and it just makes my heart happy. And so that's how I was I'm like, that's what we're using today. Um, so I'm going in with my darkest color, and I am just following the lines that the illustrator drew. This particular set, I think, is actually illustrated by my friend Emily. Uh, it definitely looks like her style. All illustrators have their own style, and this definitely looks like her style. Um, but there's a lot of detail lines in there, which can sometimes be a little bit uh, overwhelming. But if you use them to your advantage, if you use every one of those lines that is put in there, it's not overwhelming. It's almost like a map for you to use. So when I'm going in and I'm adding my shading, I am following those lines that she put in there for the most part. Now, there may be like one or two lines that I skip because either they're too close together or I don't want my leaf to be, or my leaf, my petal to be that dark. Um, but for the most part, if you just follow the lines that are already given to you, uh, you're going to have good results because that's how the person who drew it visualized it when they put it together. So once the darkest color is down, then I'm going to move out to my mid-tone. I'm going to go right over the shading that I've already put down, and I'm just going to extend it out a little bit. So I'm going to completely cover that darker color with my mid-tone and extend it out. So we're going to start filling in a little bit more of this petal as we go through each color. Now, I have two mid-tones, so you're going to see after this one is down, there's still a significant portion portion of white. And then once we do the second mid-tone, uh, you'll see that really there's just some kind of like tips and edges left for the lightest color. And that's fine. Your mid-tone should be the majority of what you see when you look at whatever it is that you're coloring. Your lightest color should be minimal because it's a highlight and your darkest color should be minimal because it's a shadow. So those mid-tones really should be the majority of what you see. So when you're picking your color combinations, pick mid-tones that you super love because <laughs> that's what you're going to see the absolute most of. So anyway, so I went back through um, 
and just was kind of looking at my own cards. Now, it's not that I'm not inspired by other people's cards. I am. But sometimes there isn't, you know, a picture on Instagram or a video on YouTube or a blog that kind of catches my interest. And so I I know that going back and looking at my own cards, that it's already in my style and that it's going to be something that I liked at one point or another. Um, and so I have a better chance of finding something that is going to inspire me to maybe rework it in a different way or use the same layout with different images, so on and so forth. So if you are struggling with finding your own creativity or you're like, I feel like I make the same thing all the time. I, I'm not really sure what, you know, my next move should be. Go back and look at some of the older things that you've created. You might surprise yourself in seeing something a little bit different now that some time has passed. Or maybe it's kind of like a tried and true technique that you're like, oh, I haven't done that in a while and I really loved it. Um, it, it could be a bunch of things, but go back and look at your own creations. And I would be willing to bet that nine times out of 10, you will find something that you're like, yeah, this one, I'm going to do this one. So here, I almost wanted to leave the highlights white and I'm because I think that it looked super cool. Um, and that would definitely be a, a different way to color this image. Ultimately, I decided that I was going to go in with my lightest color and apply it. Um, because the lightest color is so light that the highlights really do kind of pop forward uh, enough so that I was happy with the amount of dimension that I had. Um, and this flower does have a lot of layers. Dahlias have a lot of layers. Um, but it really went by super quick. And I had to color one, two, three. I had to color three of the large ones, two of the small ones. Um, and it still went by super fast. So now that that's done, we're going to work on the smaller flower. So see, I'm going to start doing it and then I'm going to be like, oh, I have to erase this. Did I color the whole thing? I might have colored the whole thing, but eventually at some point I'm going to realize I didn't erase my eraser lines. Um, and then this is the same thing. So shadows following those lines that are put down by the illustrator. Um, Typically, you're going to have your shadows where two points meet. So definitely at the base of your flower is going to be darker or where one lays on top of the other. So any petals that are tucked behind are going to be darker than your petals that are on top, just because the petals that are on top are going to get so much more light than the petals that are tucked below. So if the petals are that you have tucked below don't have any room left for your lightest color, don't worry about it. They wouldn't necessarily have too much of a highlight anyway because they're being hidden from all of that light. So, oh, here, I got almost all the way through <laughs> before I realized that I needed to erase it. Um, so then I just went through, erased that line, you know, super quick and moved on. So now we're back in with the lightest color and then I will just put that right on the edges to fill in those highlights and then we're going to move on to the center. So the large flower, there's actually two large flowers in this set. I just used one of them, honestly, because I only wanted to cut one mask. Uh, but here, they, you could only see the centers for the large flower. So I just kind of went in, I filled it in with the lightest color, and then I just did dots of the other two um, just to get some color variation and something a little bit more interesting than just a one layer of color, and then moved on to the uh, leaves. So again, I have a four color blend. You don't need four colors, you can do three. Uh, it, it just depends on wherever you're at with your coloring. I like the dimension that four colors gives me, but it's certainly not necessary to achieve dimension at all. Um, so here, once again, I feel like I'm a broken record, following the lines, follow the lines that the illustrator put down for you. And here it can be a little bit more challenging to make sure that you're leaving some areas for a highlight. Um, and so if you feel like you're more comfortable with a three color blend, that's totally fine. On my stem and my smaller leaves, I did not even use the fourth color really. I mean, just maybe like a sliver of white was left. Probably not even anything that would be noticeable except to myself because I'm like, my nose is right up in it. Um, but otherwise, you could totally go with three colors. Same thing for the leaves. So anyway, anywho. Kelly, anywho, that's that's what one of my followers calls me because I say it all the time. Um, my husband told me the other day that he has started counting all of the times I say anywho or what's the other one? But um, 
butt um he counts my butt ums and i'm like listen i'm up there doing this voiceover on the fly i have no script i'm literally just talking to you guys with nobody being here so like talking to myself even though i know i'm talking to you <laughs> for like 30 minutes so if i got a couple so's butt ums or any who's i'm fine uh, it's it is what it is it's my natural speaking pattern uh and that's just not everybody has a consciously fluid um train of thought for the entirety of 30 minutes there there has to be some breaks and that's okay so i he's gonna count them I, i'm not sure what the tally is uh but probably a lot it's probably a lot yeah so uh, going back to just like finding your own kind of inspiration. So here I went back, I looked at color or um, cards that I had previously made and that gave me the inspiration kind of for the layout. The colors that I chose really was just what made me happy. And I would recommend that if you're stuck, you know, with the, the mojo or trying to find some inspiration, definitely go with what you're already drawn to. Sometimes when you have a color palette, that isn't necessarily what you would always use or what you would naturally be drawn to, that in itself can impede you from being creative. So just go with what you love. If you love shakers, sit down and make a shaker. You love bright colors, you know, pull out them markers. What Whatever it is that brings you joy, don't be afraid to to just use that and just sit down and, and play because it will help you um, to be more creative and it will help you kind of get over that hurdle uh, so that you can, you know, play around with different things later on that maybe you're less confident with with when you play with things that build your confidence, the cards that you'll be happy with. I hope that makes sense. Um, so here I've taped my polygon in place and then I'm going to tape in um, the coordinating dies for the dahlias, run those through. And in addition to that, I will be cutting a pol the same polygon out of this, um, It's I think it's Arctic cardstock from Hero Arts, but I will be cutting it out of there as well. So now we have all of these parts. So my, my Arctic polygon will go into the other one. And then this one, I thought I was going to use the Arctic cardstock and I did end up using it because uh, I'm cheap and I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not cutting another piece. Um, I did end up using just the border of it, uh, but I found that I liked it better on white. So in order to tie everything together, I chose a blue that matched my cardstock and I am just outlining my flowers. This is something that I used to do a lot more often. I haven't done it in a while, um, but it just kind of breaks up that background and gives it a nice little halo. For the sentiments, I decided that I wanted to do gold. I made them both happy birthday cards. If you watch my channel, you've heard me say multiple times that I, the one I'm always trying to build up my stash in is birthday cards. So I treated it with my anti-static tool, and then I am stamping in um, the Be Creative Gold Metallic ink. This is a pigment ink, and I will be heat embossing it. So I'm going to stamp down that happy birthday once, and then once I am done with that, I'm going to flip the cards and then I will check it. And actually, I think I had to readjust it just a smidge um, to make sure that the happy birthday fit on there. This one, um, this top one, I did get a little bit of ink kind of on the outside somehow. I'm not really sure. Maybe when I was checking it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be cutting these out with the coordinating dies, so I'm not really worried about it. So I'm sprinkling on some gold embossing powder, and then I am going to heat set that until it is all smooth and shiny. Metallic embossing powder is still my very favorite. Like, I love a good white on black, but a metallic, metallic steals my heart. So now I kind of have everything laid out how I'm going to put them together. And I wanted to add a little bit more gold. Now, normally I would use Perfect Pearls, but the Perfect Pearls that I have is very yellow gold. And the gold embossing is more of like an antique gold. So I pulled out, these are Glimmer Metallics from Hero Arts. And you can tell this one is a very yellow gold as well. Um, they are liquid. You can use them just by themselves. I did add just a smidge of water not really, like a wet paintbrush amount. But in order to knock back the yellow in the gold, I am mixing it with a little bit of silver. And this is going to make it a little bit more antique 
colored and also a little bit more matching to the embossing that I have going on. So I just mixed that up and then I just spattered it right over the card. Now nothing is glued down at this point, but everything kind of is laying in the position that it will be in once the cards are assembled. So I spattered that on, I let them dry. Doesn't take very long because we're not using very much water. Uh, and then we're gonna start building it. So for this one, I glued my background down flat. And if you didn't want to fill in the center of this with anything, you wouldn't have to. You could put the sentiment on there and just leave that opening white and it would still be a very pretty card. Uh, it just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Um, I love that we're getting two cards out of the same supplies for this because who doesn't who isn't trying to build up their stash of things right and this is super easy way to do it because we're making two cards at one time so here i've put some uh, foam adhesive on the back of my blue polygon and i'm going to pop that into place um right in the center you don't have to pop it up it just adds a little extra layer of dimension something else that's a little bit more interesting here i missed part of the die that should have been popped out. And then I'm just going to adhere this directly over my polygon, kind of at an angle, kind of, you know, just something a little fun. And then I will use, um, I wasn't sure which gold or which metallic I was going to go with. Honeybee has, they have the best stickers. They have the best gem stickers. I, I mean, I've told you this before in the past. They are hands down the best. Um, but anyway, so I kind of held that up there to see what color I wanted to use. And then I added some gemstones to accent that uh, sentiment. And now we're going to move on. Here you'll notice I'm putting the polygon kind of up and to the left. I am not centering it. And I did um, that blue mat that you see in the background is the one that we cut out. I'm just hiding it with a white piece of cardstock. Um, but the reason that I had to put it up and to the left was to make room for my flowers on the bottom right. Uh, and so when everything is put together, you don't even necessarily notice that it's off center because um, everything else fills up that space. So I put my flower down. I didn't like push, push it so it was completely secure so that I could kind of pull up the edges and slide my other items in behind it. I have a hard time gluing down my base things without knowing how they're going to look uh, with the big thing. So you don't have to pull off the adhesive. You could probably just lay it there, but I typically don't have any issue just kind of pulling up the edges as long as I haven't pushed it, pushed it down all like all together. So there I'm just tucking in my leaf. This little leaf kind of, I don't know, he was kind of problematic. Like I couldn't find the way that I wanted him to look. Uh, and I ended up pulling up a considerable amount of the flower to make this leaf much shorter so that I liked the way it looked. Uh, fortunately, nothing ripped. So thank God for that. So then I just glued that one down. And again, um, we're going to use that same happy birthday sentiment that we heat embossed. And this one, this is why I kind of went back and forth about whether or not to pop up the flower, but I just felt like the card needed it. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? So I did have to add some thin strips of foam tape to the happy portion because that doesn't sit on top of the flower. And then I used my uh, Be Creative Precision Glue on the birthday because it sits flush onto the flower. Um, and then I just used those same gemstones. Don't mind my one random fuzzy hair. Like, what is, what is that even? I didn't even realize that that was, well, it, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, so I added the little gemstones. And then the last thing that I did to finish out the cards was, of course, add some shimmer. Um, again, you don't have to add shimmer if it's not your thing. But I love all the shimmers. And this card was about doing something that made me happy. So I hope that you learned a little bit of something. I hope that I helped you kind of find a way to find some inspiration uh, within yourself. Thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.